Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Buyer's Guide series from Ampro Engineering. Apparently I've done so many reviews on these 1 18th scale crawlers that this one was actually sent to me. Initially, this looks very, very close to the Arizona, which I reviewed in an earlier video. There's a link right there. This one here looks exactly the same. So let's take a look and see what's different. So it's also 1 18th scale. This is from Rock Hobby. Link in the description, of course, if you are interested in the vehicle. Upon initial inspection, it looks just like the Arizona, but apparently there are some unique features here. I like this box quite a lot because this is just awesome for storage and transportation. How does it held in? Piece of tape, probably. No, it flips up. No, it goes up. Okay, never mind. Oh my God, this is fantastic. Just got these little undercuts right here that hold it down. Cool. Here's the remote. You know, it's a bit on the small side, but I like these smaller remotes. Given the size of my hand, I actually this nah, feels a little crowded, maybe. Well, that's not too bad. It's interesting. I keep hitting this as I'm steering. What is all this? I love the analog potentiometers. Steering reverse, throttle reverse, no idea what all that is. Hmm, interesting. Any third, what the heck? Third channel and fourth channel? Intriguing. The car. The body is so glossy, it looks Lexan, but it is not. The body is injection molded, most likely. Mm, doesn't have much give. This could be a PC ABS. To be honest, I liked the painted look of the Arizona. But this definitely has some gloss to it. Charger and a T-wrench. Uh, what's missing? Oh, oh, here they are. For a minute, I was going to say the instructions were missing, but they are right here. Again, this all-encompassing packaging is really cool. I wish a lot of RC car companies thought about how to store the car at a later date, but I guess that's not their problem, right? Oh, Okay, so this is telling me that uh, the same manufacturer is making this as well as the both the Arizona and the Patriots. One thing of noting here is it does mention a waterproof frame. Well, that's simply because the motors can be submerged and the rest of the frame is plastic and metal. Uh, electronics here, it specifies as water resistant. So again, I would stay away. So here's the overall... Here's the overview of the transmitter. You can pause there if you want to see it. The little dip switches are showing switch to the electric adjustment mode for 12. So we'll investigate that. There's information here on binding as well as the calibration of the remote control, which again is, is very, very cool. For both of the other two RCs that I reviewed here, this little tab thingy always leaves a mess. And you know, this isn't... A little bit here on the front, but that's about it. Okay, so the battery is embedded back here. And like the other two, the only access you have to the... Wait, where's the power switch? Oh, so the electronics on this are different. What is all this going on in here? So as of now, channel 3 and channel 4 are unused, which is unfortunate. There's a number of lighting options here. Uh, light ports... 9 and 10, ambient and roof, are unused. It's showing 10 and 11 as well, but I don't know where those are because it's 8 and 9 are pointing to these top two, and 10 and 11 are pointing to the other columns. I don't get that entirely. I'm curious if I can purchase this receiver because I've got a lot of smaller projects that this would be great on. The servo right here apparently runs off of... I guess it would be channel one. Oh yeah, channel one would be steering servo. So the ESC it must be built into this. There's a capacitor poking through the top right there. This is a very nice little tidy setup here. Power switch. Is this the power switch? Wow. Okay, that's... Um, hmm. Guys, if you're going to make these chassis, you've got to make the power switch both more accessible 
and not so dangly. That's, that's unfortunate. Put the battery in. These usually come with a bit of energy. Shove that back in there. Again, battery fitment's just a little bit snug. I mean, it's doable, but it's just, you know, it's a little snug in there. Let's power the vehicle on. Wait, that's, yeah, off. it is on. Shut that back off and put some batteries in here. So these batteries. <laughs> Evidently, I cannot get this open. Okay. There it goes. So I'm assuming four triple A's. For this, we'll have to just note that that is negative right there. So put that in one, two, and positive is on the opposite side. There is no little diagram, which is unfortunate given that these would probably be purchased for younger folks. Let's turn this on. Okay, and we'll turn this on, see if they auto bind. Ooh, this is good. On the other two vehicles, the steering wheel would max out the maximum turning radius of the servo early on in the arc of the wheel. But on this one here, it'll go all the way at the same rate as the car, which is great. So we do have front turn signals. The rear, I would assume, is the same. Cool. And headlights will, I guess, turn on as you go forward. Uh-oh. Reverse. Hmm. Um, is the car going the right way? Forward. Reverse. So I think what's happened here is someone has installed the wiring on the headlight port and taillight port in reversed order. So six and seven, headlight taillight, six and seven right here. So it's the last two. I'm gonna go ahead and do this on camera just because this is uh, something that hopefully doesn't happen to you. It's a little bit snug in here. Okay, so this one here, okay, that comes out. And uh, that one should be seven, which is the taillight port. So that means if I reverse now, the headlights should stay off. Oh. Oh, the headlights are turning on. Seven, seven taillight port. Oh, huh, that's weird. Is that mislabeled? So that's for the taillights. So now we should have no taillights either, or headlights. Okay, so those are not working. Now we can reverse them. Shove that right back in there. Reverse. Okay. And headlights will be in here. Now, before anybody starts complaining about poor quality, understand this. Um, there are often iterations of PCBs that, uh, that can happen during the development process. And it's possible that this PCB went through a few changes while this manual was being written and it just never got up the food chain. So it's unfortunate that this happened here. I hope this is not the case with all of them. There you go, forward and reverse. Now, earlier I was complaining that the headlights only come on when you accelerate like this. Well, that's because I didn't push enough buttons on here. Check this out. So headlights off unless you accelerate. Taillights off unless you go uh, reverse, I think. Yeah, so there's a brake light that comes on and then the same light comes on in reverse, which is unfortunate, but what are you gonna do? You can also come over here and press this here channel four button, uh, double click it. And then all the lights turn on, the side mar the turn signals, headlights, taillights. And there's two at the back here. So the turn signal LED and the reverse and brake LED. And they do this pulse, which um, I don't know, it's a thing. I can't see using this. Let's double click it again. And um, okay, again, I don't see much use in that. Double click again. Now we're talking. 
Headlights are on. Tail lights are on. The downside is now you don't get a brake light. But you have a tail light. So at night you can have tail lights. Press it once and check this out. Hazard lights. That's kind of cool. That's neat. Press it once more, shuts off the hazard lights and double clicking. Is this off? Okay, no, that's not off. I thought there was an off setting. I might be wrong. But we're not quite done yet. So there's channel three. Now there's nothing in the channel three servo, but what we do have is, so right now it's in the center. See my headlights? Now you don't. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So headlights off, unless you accelerate and go, oh, she's nothing in reverse, interesting. I wonder if I can shut that off too. Let's try and double click. There you go. So now we have no headlights. If we turn it on, we're at that pulse thing here again. Single click. Will that give us hazards? No. Double click again. So you can see that it's still doing stuff in the background. It's just basically showing that depending on a certain parameter that you have for the headlights, in the initial position, they could also be shut off. There is a ton of sophistication in this car's electronics. I am supremely impressed. That's really, really cool stuff. But for all that sophistication, this is our power switch, which again is very irritating. I mean, I guess there's a spot for it there, but it really should be accessible externally. And the battery just, I don't know. To me, the battery placement seems like an afterthought. Nonetheless, it's not like it's going to cause any problems, I don't think. These wires here seem a little bit, a little bit messy. And uh, there we go. This red LED is telling us that these batteries are good. If our green LED is flashing, again, that's a little bit counterintuitive. The flashing LED here means that these batteries are dying. But there's another LED, this RX battery, and that happens to be the onboard battery of the vehicle. Currently, it's green, and that means that this battery is good. I didn't realize what it was doing, but when I was doing some of my testing, the light shut off, and here, as it turns out, car battery, two colors for, two colors light for battery volume display. Again, what it's saying here is that good power, it's green. Power is going down, it's yellow, and when it's low, it's red. And when the vehicle can't talk to the radio, then it's completely off. And that's what happens here if you shut the car off. There you go. That is absolutely slick. Now, there's more buttons up here. We have two trims and two rates for channel one and for channel two. But there is also a channel three and a channel four. Should you double click the bind button... Now, these two lights are alternating. What that means is channel 3 and channel 4. So channel 3 would be these two, and channel 4 would be these two. You, so you could set your three different speeds of uh, potentially a three-speed transmission or something else that you want the channel 3 to do. And same with channel 4, which is a momentary switch. Double-clicking this again sets you back to standard channel 1 and channel 2. That is really, really neat. But we're not quite finished yet. The dip switches up here also do something. So this one here, now watch this. I'm going to go forward, come to a stop. See, I'm at full stop. And now if I press it again, I can go backwards. So that's your standard brake and reverse. You can hit the dip switch here and go forward reverse now you want to be careful doing this you don't want to go full forward and then full reverse so i'm going to set you right back to where you were channel two or or, or dip switch number two goes from nickel metal hydride to lithium polymer so right now we're at lithium polymer and up would give us our uh, nickel metal hydride Dip switches three and four are for the drag brake. Both down will give you zero drag brake. Diagonal 50, opposite diagonal 75, and both up 100. Now, given this car's 
gear ratio and underdrive. I mean, you see I'm pushing it here and it's already not wanting to move. I honestly don't know how well the drag brake is going to work on this thing here, but nevertheless, it is there. What I've done is made this Duplo obstacle course. And when I say me, I mean my children. I think that given the size of this vehicle here and the fact that I've already driven similar ones on rocky terrain as well as dirt, I think this would be a good application given the fact that its size is more conducive to an indoor environment. And let's be very clear, this Duplo structure that I've created is pretty intense. Let's try and get it up. It has made it before, but this is really kind of at the limit of I would say probably more my driving abilities. All right, trying this again. There we go. There we go. The tires on this thing are supremely grippy. I'm gonna pause here. All right, now I'll show you how it's actually gonna go over these. Oop, no, don't go that way. That was my fault. The articulation on this truck. Is quite good and then over here. Okay, so this part right here really involves turning the truck the wrong way. There it goes to get it to go down that. And then maintaining a slow speed down here, otherwise it'll flip forward. There we go. I've gone through at least four battery packs on this. It's just like, well, let me try it once and then I didn't make it. Let me try it again, or that was too easy. Ooh, here he goes. I love how it lifts that tire up. Again, I'm the one that's trying to inch this thing as slow as possible. There it goes. And just note the tires, how the tires completely deform and and stretch over everything, they work really well. Oops, come on. I'll also reverse this so you can see the articulation on the other side. Watch it go down this bit here. This little valley is good because what ends up happening is, I think, yeah, the bumper hits the Duplo and kind of gets stuck. So it's all about a little bit of power over it. There he goes. I just love how little throttle this, oops. <laughs> of course it, uh, let's see. As I was saying, I just love how little throttle you can give it. And there we go. So before I flip this thing around so you can see it go up the other side, I want to pull out another car here. This is the Panda Hobby Ford Bronco. And uh, we're going to try and make this do that same thing. Now this vehicle has three electronic speeds, a slow, medium, and fast. We're going to start on slow, but again, that's just changing the amount of power applied to the motor. That's not changing the gear ratio. Uh, hmm. There it goes. Okay. I was going to say. So this thing. Hmm. This thing has a shorter wheelbase, which is a problem. Because remember, I did build this track for the other car. Uh, 
Uh, it needs more power. I'm putting it into medium. Oh, 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 oh. shoot, we had it. Oh my god. Just, see, it just wants to. Let's set it right here and see if it can get beyond that. Okay, let's put it there. All right, it. It's made it a couple inches. Let's see if we can get over this. I'm seeing so little deflection in the tires here. See the bumpers catching on the Duplo now. Oh God. Okay. Let's try and get it to go up this. I'm getting tired now. Okay, it's going pretty well so far. Oh, I said words. Why did I say words? Okay. Well, since the Panda Hobby Truck got a DNF, let's go ahead and put this towel down this blanket here because the WPL this is the C24 will give it a go now the C24 is a bigger truck with a longer wheelbase I believe and very soft grippy tires but I don't think they're as soft or as grippy as the ones on the fire horse all right so in first gear I do have a two-speed transmission in this car oh and let's put our brake back there we go And hence the blanket. Okay, let's pull this thing off, even though I don't think this is the problem. I think the problem is down over here. Let's just set this here and see what it can do. Worst comparison video ever. Now I've driven two others, two other variants of this truck. This Rock Hobby and FMS and Ishin, I believe they're all the same company, but for the Land Cruiser styled vehicle, I did drive that 
uh, on a nice dirt terrain on the other Wrangler style vehicle that was the Arizona I believe I drove that on rock so for this one here since they're basically the same chassis the Duplo seemed like something I hadn't done before with this vehicle now I have driven the Duplo bridge with a number of my WPLs as well as my Panda Ford Bronco which we both saw in this video uh, the thing was with the WPL it's just too big for it and those tires aren't nearly as soft as these the the uh the bronco the panda bronco um that one's just geared way too high that silliness on the radio where you can choose the speed is to me useless but the gearing on this truck here really allows you to inch its way up and get a good feel for what the truck is doing and not over accelerate and make the thing lunge and all that which which was great now there is a setting here involving holding channel four while turning it on which is supposed to have the speed for beginners now unfortunately i could not get that to operate i don't know if it's my own incompetence or perhaps just i'm not understanding it correctly uh, or a bit of both you might already think that this is very slow but the thing is even reducing its speed further would make it even more useful on some of that terrain now the duplos i think were an incredibly good test for this thing here because number one they're fairly slippery in a lot of the surfaces i'm able to get some real nice articulation out of this thing here and it really performed fantastic now the question of course is do you want to get one of these? I believe I've said the same for my other two reviews. For outdoor use, I would say that these are limited. What This is really broaching the scale of usable outdoors versus usable indoors. I still think that for a trail truck, this is more than capable. On a clean trail, if you're going to have something with grass and weeds and all that, it's never going to be able to do that because it's it's still very light. For an indoor application, this thing is, is absolutely the best I've worked with. It's better than my WPLs. It's definitely better than my Panda Bronco. I think the cosmetics of this blow the Panda Bronco out of the water. It's, I mean, I'm not a huge Jeep guy, nor do I like the angry face on this thing here. I also feel that the red uh, plastic on this, even though it's nicely detailed, it's too glossy and it looks really cheap. The yellow version of it is painted yellow and it looks a lot more high-end. So again, it's the kind of thing that'll double as a model on a shelf and as a toy you can drive around. And for children, it's not too fast, so there's less likelihood of damaging furniture around the house. It is not an inexpensive vehicle. It costs, I want to say $130, $140 as of right now. And again, there are links in the description to this. That's a lot more than an entry-level WPL. But you're looking at a, a higher quality vehicle. There is a parts source for this. I don't know that there's much aftermarket, however, but you are getting a fairly high end and well thought out electrical system on here. I've got one 10 scale vehicles that don't have a radio nearly as nice as this. I mean, the it has a lot of bulk to it, especially for its size. The finish on here, this is not some kind of sticker this is actually molded into the uh, into the plastic again the the different styles of molding tells us that the actual company cared enough to give something that didn't feel or look cheap and the irony is i think the radio looks better than the car does again this glossiness isn't isn't for me but nevertheless if you want something for indoors, perhaps the location that you're at has a nice smooth walking trail and it's not convenient to have something larger, this can be used outdoors, but I would still hesitate to do that on a constant basis. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't foresee doing any other reviews on this brand anytime soon. There is one other vehicle I've had my eye on, but um, I've got a lot of other projects right now lined up. So it might be a while before you see another review on one of these smaller scale vehicles. Thank you all so much for watching. We have got a ridiculous amount of content already uploaded and uh, ready to edit. So please stay tuned and I will see you next time. Look at that. Oh, God. Oh.
Uh, oh, oh. Can we do it? Sorry for my commentary. Uh, come on. This is where throttle control is necessary. Oh, God. I'm so terrible at this. Oh, God. Oh, God. Come on. There you go. There you go, there you go. Okay, back down. This is the hard part here. <sighs> Come on. See, because it wants, if you, if you turn to the right, it wants to push the truck to the left. So you end up having to aim the wheel straight Oh, God. Come on. There you go. Okay. I think we're in the home stretch. All right. Come on. Sweet. This side's easier to go up by far. Deflection on the back tire. These tires are awesome. Come on. So again, it gets caught there. So it's all about rocking the truck a bit. And look at the tire. There it goes. Ooh. There you go. And down. 